Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Jillian Barry, and today we have an incredible video in store for you guys and a great guest. Her name is Helia. She is a friend of mine and she is a manifestation mentor, a law of attraction teacher, and she studied through Bob Proctor and she knows so much about manifesting our dream life. So that is what we are talking about today. You guys have so many amazing questions. We're just going to talk about how to manifest your best life in 2023, whether it be money, relationships, health, everything. We've got you guys covered. So let's get right into it. Hey, Helia, how's it going? Thank you for hey. coming on. Hey, Jillian. Thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited to be on here with you and to answer the questions. Yeah, me too. And I know you're so busy with your clients. So thank you for giving us your time today. And you know so much about manifesting. So I would love to start with how can we manifest our dream life when we are just caught up in negative thinking and our life is not working out for us? And just things are not going well. And it's just so hard to pretend things are going well or feel like they're going well to like fake it till you make it law of attraction wise, but things just are in the dumps and they're not going good. Then what should be the steps we take to move in the direction of a life of our dreams when that's sort of how things are feeling and looking? Yeah, that's an amazing question. And that's, that's the hardest part because of the momentum, right? We get into that negative momentum and it's just difficult to get out of that. Well, if you think about it, like law of attraction, when we are in that negative cycle of thoughts, we are attracting more of those negative thoughts and more of those negative circumstances and events. And it's really, really hard to get out of it. But there are ways and there you have to give yourself some time, first of all, and have grace and know that everything happens for you. I know it's some, sometimes hard to believe, but everything happens for you is for you. It's not against you. And everything happens for you for a reason, even if you don't see it right now at this moment. I think it was Steve Jobs who said, we only can connect the dots looking backward, not forward. So I'm sure you or your audience, or even for myself, we've had events and circumstances that it, they were really, really difficult. And we were like in that negative momentum. And when we look back like five years, 10 years, sometimes 20 years later, we looked back and we were like, oh, that's why that thing happened. So got me to think this way and got me to take that action. And that's why I'm, I'm where I am right now because of that negative thing that happened years ago, right? But to answer your question, so how can we get out of that circumstance? Because we don't want to be there, even if it's teaching us a lesson, we want to live a happy life, right? There are simple ways and simple action steps that we can take that are really, really helpful. But the key is in consistency, like doing these small steps every single day, if it's just a few minutes a day. So one of the things that really, really helped me and helped my students is gratitude. So every morning when you wake up, before you get caught up with the negativity of and the momentum of the night before, right after you wake up, Either write it down or some people are better with writing it down and visually seeing the words. Some people are better with, for me, it works when I say it out loud and I hear myself and I just close my eyes. And sometimes I put on a nice music, uplifting music, something that really, really gets into my emotions. And I think about the things that I'm grateful for. I'm sure even in, in the worst circumstances, we always have things to be grateful. The fact that we are breathing as simple as that. The fact that we have fresh air, right? The fact that we have food, we have water, we have our health, we have friends, whatever that is that you can be really feeling. It's not about the mechanical doing, writing, taking the action of writing the gratitude list. It's all in this manifestation world. It's all about feeling it. So feel the gratitude of your, your family, your children, your friends, uh, Simple things. I'm sometimes I'm so grateful for my sheets when I wake up in the morning. I have this amazing, this like um, cozy earth sheets that are super super soft, and I just lay um, in my bed for a few minutes, and I'm just feeling the gratitude of having this bed and having this soft sheet. So gratitude really 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 helps, and just doing it every day at a time, and know that you're gonna get out of that negative momentum. Negative situations and circumstances they don't last forever. Nothing lasts forever. There is a law in this universe called law of polarity or law of rhythm. So we have negativity and positivity. We have day and night. We have winter and spring. 
So this is by law, this is nature, this is the whole universe. If you're going through some negative period of time, know for sure, for sure, for sure that you're going to get out of it. And it's just temporary. How long is it going to last up to universe and up to the actions that you take? But yeah, I highly recommend gratitude. Okay, amazing. I learned a lot from that. That was great. And speaking of different laws, have you heard of the law, the vacuum law? I remember I heard Bob Proctor talk about that law before. Where it's like, if you want to attract a spouse, you need to make room in your closet for things and room in the bed. Or if you want to attract a new car, go as far to get rid of the car you don't like and make space in your driveway. Like, what do you think about all of that? And do you think that that does come into play when it comes to manifesting? Absolutely. Yes. I love that law because we sometimes tend to hold on things because of the our scarcity, right? Our brain is like how many, I don't know how old is our brain, but the way that functions, it is the same as it always did since the human was, they were born and they were created on this planet. So our mind, the first function is survival based on survival system. So it wants to keep us safe, wants to keep us alive. So we hold on to things. We don't want to let go of things because we feel we are safe. Uh, in the same familiar environment, either if it's our partner, it's our closet and our stuff, our car, we don't want to do, we don't want to have changes that much. So we tend to not let go of things, but the way that it works, the law of vacuum, as Bob Proctor calls it, you have to trust the universe and leave some room and space so it can deliver to you more. And when you do that, you're showing the universe that you trust the universe, right? You're showing the trust. Like imagine even if it comes to money, right? Sometimes we we are scared to spend and money needs to be circulated, right? That's the mistake that people make. And this is something that definitely I was told by my parents. Like you have to save for the rainy days, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we want to hold on to this thing, but money is energy like everything else. If we hold on to it, it means we are scared. It means we're telling the universe that I don't trust you. There's mm-hmm. no more for me. So I'm just holding on to this little that I have. But as soon as I've, I've experienced that in my life so many times, as soon as you start helping others, especially like giving money, buying things for your friends, for other people who are in need or spending it on yourself, right? Money always comes back. It's so amazing. Either it comes back through your job, your business, or you get gifts, like random things that you you just let go of the scarcity and um, create some more room and the universe brings you more and it applies to everything. Relationships, our closet, are every time you get rid of your clothes, you're going to fill up your closet pretty much soon. Yeah. So yeah, definitely this law works all the time about everything. And how can we work on having that faith and trusting the universe? I know for me, that's something I really struggle with. And especially during like hard times, whether it come to any area of my life. So do you have any tips for sort of how to just have that faith and stay feeling good rather than, you know, getting so stressed and worried mm-hmm. and not trusting the universe? Mm-hmm. Yes. So one of the things I learned from Bob was that, so we have, remember I talked about polarity. There are, there are two things that are the way that we think also is negative and positive. So polarity in our thinking as well. And the negative side usually comes from when we don't have faith, when we are scared and it comes from ignorance, Bob calls it. And ignorance is the opposite of knowledge. And knowledge comes from understanding and from studying. So when we start studying these laws of the universe and the way that universe works and the way that our brain works, by studying, we gain this knowledge and this knowledge feeds our faith. So the faith is not like blind faith. I don't like blind faith because it's not based on anything. Faith faith based on understanding and the knowledge of the way that the universe works. And it comes with studying. So that's something that I teach to my students. You just get yourself more and more educated on how the universe works Mm -hmm. and see the examples of your life and just bring this understanding to yourself every day, practicing, learning, even if it's few minutes a day, it doesn't have to be the whole day. But slowly when you start learning these things, 
you see how the universe works, then you develop your faith. I get what you're saying, because the more like you learn like that, then you start believing. And then that sort of triggers the faith, right? Because you believe after educating yourself so much or reading so much about it. That's kind of like, what do you think about repetition? So sometimes I listen to affirmations as I sleep. I haven't been lately. I have, I've been lazy with it. I have to get back on it. But I was doing money ones for a while where it was like repeating the same thing over and over with this app called I am and I record in my own voice. And it's mm -hmm. like God's wealth is flowing to me and avalanches mm -hmm. of abundance. I am wealthy. I am rich. And when I was doing that, I was attracting a lot more money. Like a, the first month I did it, I attracted like a quick deal out of nowhere. It was like, I think it was like 20,000. And then the first night I slept with it, I remember an old friend who I don't talk to anymore sent me an e-transfer of money because she felt like she owed me some money. And she was like, I'm sorry. Or she was like, not sorry, but, and I was like, whoa, like it's creepy. It's almost like it does work. What do you think about that technique to sort of train our beliefs and get into our subconscious mm -hmm. mind, like listening to affirmations over and over, sleeping with them? And do you have any in particular that you recommend? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. So we have this thing in our mind, which is Bob Proctor calls it paradigm. And paradigm is a multitude of habits, our belief system. And it's like a box that keeps us inside that box. And we don't see outside of that. And we want to change our paradigm to change the results in our life, right? And there are two ways to change our paradigm. One of the ways is through an emotional impact. And Bob said it's usually a negative impact. It's a death of a, some, someone that we love or like 9-11 was an emotional impact or divorce. These things that are usually negative doesn't have to be necessarily negative, but negative hits us more. That changes our paradigm. The second thing that changes our paradigm is exactly what you mentioned is affirmation and repetitions. Repetition is the key. So you said you stopped it for a while and you don't probably don't see the same results when you no. were doing it, you saw the results. So it, it's absolutely true. And the key is in repetition. But the trick with affirmation is that so many people think it doesn't work because it is not about just repeating things. If you don't believe it, it is not going to work. So mm -hmm. if deep down the underlying tone in you and in your body is like, I don't, I don't believe in what I'm saying, doesn't matter how many times you repeat it, it is not going to work. So again, feeling is the most important thing. It is not just the thinking and saying and writing, and it's about the feeling too. So if you try to incorporate the feeling and just have this, this faith and belief that what I am saying and I'm repeating I'm feeding my subconscious mind and my subconscious is absorbing it. So it is coming to reality. Then it's absolutely going to work. I love affirmations. I do affirmations every morning, usually in the morning, not that much in the evening, but I know that you can listen to them, sleep with them. There are amazing apps out there. The one that you mentioned is also so, so amazing, especially if you record your own voice mm -hmm. and listen to it. The way I do it, I, I say affirmations in front of the mirror and I look into my eyes. Wow. So I look into my eyes in the mirror and that's very powerful for me. It works 100%. And I really try to get into the zone and just feel the affirmations. One of the affirmations that I love, 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 I learned it from Bob is I am so happy and grateful now that money, that now that I'm attracting money in abundance through multiple sources on a continuous basis. Wow love that about money because it's it says like it's coming to me all the time from different sources because we don't know where money is coming from and we don't want to dictate the universe we want to be open to different ways and the other affirmation I love is that I'm so happy and grateful now that everything is working out for me all the time everything is working out for me all the time and I have affirmations about I am calm and confident I'm calm and confident and we want to be in a relaxed state that's what I thought uh, I learned from Bob before getting into this material I was like really really like go 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 hustle hustle go get her do this do that and I I, I wasn't in a calm relaxed state and I found out when we are serene we are calm we are relaxed things always work out better for us so these are just a few affirmations that I love and I use almost every day and how many times will you say them in the mirror Usually for one to two minutes. Okay. Yeah, one wow. to two minutes. I have them recorded too. Sometimes I listen to that, but most of the time I, I look into the mirror and I say that as long as I I say it to the extent that I really, really feel it. So when I feel it and I'm like, okay, it's good and I believe it, it's already there, 
than I thought. Mm-hmm. But you can say it as as much as you want. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. And I didn't say already, but may Bob Proctor rest in peace. He was amazing. And he had such an impact on so many people's lives on this planet and such a positive impact. And just his YouTube videos, when I was going through my divorce, I was watching them over and over while my separation when that happened. And it just helped me so much. I think he was amazing. And you studied under his program. So what would you say are some of the top things that come to mind? that really hit you, like really sunk in with you and were just some of the biggest things you learned from Bob Proctor? Mm. Yeah, he was an amazing human being and he just passed away this year, unfortunately. Mm. He left so much, like he's he studied and taught this material for over 60 years. Like the majority of his life, he studied so many books, but one book that he said he always studied like every day and the book was falling apart when he showed it in his seminars was, was uh, Think and Grow Rich. And he was mentored by uh, Earl Nightingale and all these amazing teachers. So he had an amazing knowledge of all this material and manifestations and things like that. Mm. I've learned so much from him and his material. But one of the things that I, I love, and I didn't know about that before getting into Bob Proctor teachings, is the higher faculties of mind. I'm not sure if you've you've heard of that. So he always said people don't think and that's so interesting that we think people think of course people think but he said mental activity doesn't constitute thinking and the way you really think and you create your life by thinking is using the higher faculties of mind and those higher faculties of mind are perception reason the will intuition imagination and reason is that did I say reason Mm -hmm. I think I did so uh, when I learned about these I was like so fascinated because so this is how you create your life this is how you manifest your dream life you use the higher faculties of your mind like your imagination and you create a life that you want in your mind right so you don't react to the environment and no matter what your environment is, like right now, what is your 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 bank account, your relationship, your health, you want to completely, this is what I learned from Bob and I love, you want to completely ignore the circumstances, mm-hmm. completely ignore your bank account, your relationship, whatever mm-hmm. is happening that you don't like, and use your higher faculties of your mind to create what you want. And I've never, I've never knew that I was always reacting. And that's why we create the same results year after year. That's why we earn the same kind of amount of money year after year. Even if people change businesses, they find themselves earning this almost the same amount of money because they are looking at the result and they are creating their future results based on their current results. So we don't want to do that. We want to ignore current results and we want to use our higher faculties and create what we want in our mind first. And it's more powerful to especially work on that mind visualization in the mornings, right? When you wake up and right before you fall asleep, right? That's what I've learned. Absolutely. Yeah. In the morning and before you sleep and also like incorporating these into your day-to-day life and trying not to be reactive to your environment, trying to create your dream life in your mind. And it's just so beautiful and fun, you know, to daydream, to be in your mind and create things the way you want right? And perception also is so, so important. So one of the higher faculties is perception. There was a quote, I don't know who who said that. Was it Edison? I'm not sure. But he said, oh, I think it was uh, Wayne Dyer. He said, when you change the way you think, you look at something, the something you look at changes. So it's mm-hmm. perception. Mm-hmm. And when we change our perception about what is happening in my life right now, change your perception to finding something positive out of it and creating what you want in your mind based on changing the perception. So it's a lot about these higher faculties and just creating the life you want in your mind, regardless of what is happening right now. Mm -hmm. I heard, yeah, I heard Joe Dispenza say in a podcast the other day about not reacting and how when we react to life circumstances, we're basically saying we're a victim to life. And like, that really hit me. It's hard for me to like something that like really hit me, but that really sunk in when he said that. Yes. And that kind of does make sense. But I think that can be the biggest struggle for a lot of us. Yeah. Not reacting to things like that we don't want 
And like, do you have any tips on that? How, cause you know, I mean, then we can react and get into a neg negative cycle and then we yeah. can be like, oh no, I'm like in this bad state, I'm going to attract more bad. And then that adds even more stress. Right. So like, how can we not react? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what has been helping me just recently, uh, actually that I, I learned and I'm incorporating it into my life is that I keep telling myself that exactly the word that you use, like victim. I keep telling myself that I don't want to be victim. I don't want to mm. be victim of other people. I don't want to give this power to anyone else to control my life. If I'm being reactive, like something recently happened in my relationship. And I'm usually very, very reactive. Before getting into this material, I would be like fighting and losing it and just reacting to the situation but I'm so honestly I'm so proud of myself I was telling my partner last night and I'm so proud of myself that I didn't react because I didn't want to give him the power to control me right just keep reminding yourself that if I'm reacting I am giving you the power to control my feelings and I'm not going to do that I am the only person in control of my feelings I control my life so one of the things that I learned from Bob is the attitude and the attitude Earl Nightingale said it's the magic word and what attitude means in these kind of teachings is attitude is the composite of our thoughts feelings and actions right and we want to keep the absolute best attitude every day so this is one of the other affirmations I tell myself every morning I say I, I'm so happy and grateful now that I have the absolute best attitude every day regardless what is happening so I'm keeping positive thoughts, I'm feeling positive, and I'm taking positive actions, right? So I'm not being the victim of people and circumstances. It mm -hmm. is all about, like, you know, repeating these things over and over and educating yourself and just reminding yourself that I'm being reactive, I'm giving that person my, the power. I don't want to give them power, the power is within me, mm -hmm. right? So affirmations work here too, you know, just reminding yourself that, you're not going to give anyone the, the power to control you and you're not being reactive. You're going to respond and you get so much better results in every situation. We don't get good results when we are reactive. We've all experienced no. that. right? And we never feel good when we react like negatively never. to any, it never feels good. Whether it's like external, whether you like let it out towards somebody or inside feel it, like it doesn't feel good. Right. And we regret and we re regret uh, our reactions. And on the other hand, when you start responding, you feel amazing. You feel so much better about yourself. And another thing that helps me a lot is that I'm recently using is that I'm stepping into the higher version of myself. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I love that. And how can we work on forgiving ourselves maybe because we need to feel good in order many times in order to attract our dream life manifest our dream life so if we're carrying around shame or guilt over things we've done and we feel bad whether it be from something we did like moments ago or years ago like do you have any tips for how to forgive ourselves and move past that and feel good inside about mistakes we've made yeah you have to get rid of guilt for sure guilt is the very very bad negative feeling and you have to get rid of it whatever you did cause you to learn something right mm -hmm. you, that's why at the beginning of our, our our call I said you have to have grace you have to have grace for yourself and for others we are not perfect no one is right no one is perfect we are just getting better and better as I and as uh, ju I just said we are stepping into the better version of ourselves so that's the key we're improving every day a little bit one percent every day that's the key and just uh Forgive yourself, forget about the past, because by, by carrying that guilt, by carrying that negative feeling and negative momentum, you're not improving anything, not mm -hmm. in your life, not on, on anyone's life around you, right? So we have to have grace and we have to know that no one is perfect. I'm not perfect. Bob was not perfect. We are just learning and growing all the time. Mm -hmm. And what are maybe some examples of like, if you have any amazing manifesting stories of things you've manifested, like maybe like one or two mm -hmm. situations. I love that. I've manifested so much in my life. And before getting into this material, I didn't know that what is manifestation and I'm manifesting these things so many, but like the recent one, the very recent one is the house that I live in. Before moving to this house, I always imagined I loved to have a water view, especially from my office, my home office. 
And now I'm just sitting in my home office and I exactly have the water view. So there's no other house um, across the street and it's just um, Lake Ontario view. That's absolutely something that I manifested because at the time when we were looking for a house, there were so many, um, so many houses on the market and they were going so fast. This house was sitting on the market for, I think, for three months. Wow. And I'm like, why no one got this house? It's a beautiful house, mm -hmm. water view, amazing location. And I'm like, this is, this is standing on the market just for us to make an offer on it. And this is exactly what happened. And we had a little bit of a back and forth with the agent, actually. And I was like, kind of like, I want this house, but I'm not needy. So this is also another key for manifestation. Yeah. I want it. I would love to have it, but I'm not going to die if I don't have it. So I didn't really, I wasn't really, really obsessed about it. I wanted it. So I was cool with the agent. And finally, it magically, it worked out. So this is the very recent manifestation I did. Wow. Another crazy manifestation I did that. It's very funny and very, very specific is that the name of my my partner, my my husband. So when I was, I think, 19 or 20, for whatever crazy reason, I always thought the person that I'm going to live with has this his name, that the current name that my partner No has. way. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I was alone with myself and I was imagining myself being in this beautiful relationship and calling him Hamid when I was 19, when I was 20. And years after, I didn't even realize when I met him first. Years wow. after, I realized, I remembered because I forgot. I totally forgot. I remember, oh my God, that's the exact same name that in my dreams, I had this dream, life dream partner. I used to call him the same exact name. Wow, that's crazy. Oh my gosh. I know. And this job, this, this, this work that I do, this is, this is my dream work. I always love to, I've always been into personal development and you know, things like that. I've always read books since I was 19. And I loved to teach this to people because I know people have so much potential and they don't know it. And majority of people need this information. Like I would say like 99% of people need this information. It's so beautiful when you learn the power of mind, the laws of the universe and how we can live a better life, easier life, more fulfilled than abundant life. So that was my, my dream job and I'm doing it right now. And I'm I always wanted to live a laptop lifestyle. So I'm booking somewhere, probably going to, I'm not sure yet, but probably it's going to be Costa Rica. Yeah, that's in exciting. January, I'm going to have my live lunch from there and live a life of my dream. And that's also something I manifest. In. And we're Amazing. always manifesting. Sometimes yeah, that's... we're manifesting knowingly and consciously. Sometimes we are manifesting unconsciously, unfortunately. Yeah. And I love the stuff you were saying about not being needy. I watch a lot of Aaron Doughty uh, videos on YouTube and he talks a lot about that. And he used like a similar story about when he purchased his, when he purchases his properties over the years, how like not being like, Oh, I need it. Or like same with relationships. If you're needy, like it's going to repel that person. If you're chasing something, it's going to make that person run away. Right. Or that thing, if you're chasing money, it's going to run away. So how can we work on like you know, being grounded and not need these things and not being needy like that. Yeah. So we'll just remember that when you are, you are needing it, you're not helping it, right? You have to love something. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we have, we have goals, we have desires and we have dreams that we, we really want them. And it's not about forgetting them and letting go of them. It's about wanting them, but not being in the energy of being needy mm -hmm. because Maybe the universe has something better for you, right? We never know. We are so narrow-minded. Like our mind compared to the universe and the plans that the universe has for us, sometimes we are like, we want to, we want that specific thing or that specific person. So true. You never know what the universe has in store for you. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like when I ha I have two daughters and I always really wanted a son too. Like I always really wanted a boy. And the last mm -hmm. one I was like, this is a boy, I'm sure of it. And then I found out it was a girl and I was like really upset. Cause I really wanted a boy. And then like, I met my daughter and now just me having two daughters is like perfect for me. Like we're all such girly girls and like, it's just like Love the them. perfect fit. And yeah. I couldn't imagine like having a boy now. Like, it's just like, I'm so grateful that that's what happened. So I think like, that's kind of an example too, of like how we have to trust the universe. If maybe we're not getting something, maybe it is right for us and we just don't realize, or maybe there is something better down the line. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's also something that I'm always 
it always surprises me, but it was me too a few years ago, is, is when it comes to our relationships. I work with a lot of women who are going through separation or divorce, and they are just, they want this current partner so bad as if there is no other partner out there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a, that's lack, right? I saw somebody yeah. talking about that the other day saying that's having like a lack mentality. Lack mentality and not trusting the universe, right? There are so many people out there, like different ages, different cultures, and it's not just one person for you. And I always say these um, like women who are going through divorce and uh, separation that maybe that person was for you at that time, perfect timing for you, a good match. But maybe you grew separately and it's not a match for you anymore. But it is not just one person for you. Trust the universe. Maybe there's someone better out there. Mm -hmm. I give you a personal um, personal example for me. You, well, you know my story uh, kind of, but I've been divorced a couple of times. And I confidently say, that, and I've been through relationships, long, long-term relationships, Every time I break up or get divorced with someone, the next person is always better. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's exactly what always happens for me. You know why? And, and, and it's not randomly, it's not by accident. It is because of, um, I think it's um, the law of polarity or the contrast. It's because of the contrast. So you see things that are not working in your current relationship. And it's Abraham Hikes talks about contrast a lot. So contrast mm. is amazing. If you're going through contrast in your life, you are in one of the best spots because you are clarifying what you really want. When you know what you don't want, you immediately know what you want, right? True. You don't even have to think about it. Like this person is acting this way. It's really bothering me. I want, I don't want that. So I want the opposite of that. And when you become clear, you're sending this message to the universe, it's based on the law of attraction, right? And manifestation. And then you, you attract those qualifications and those characteristics that you want in your next partner. That's why the next partner always keeps getting better. Yeah. You have to change partners all the time. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. And how do we know if we're with the right partner or if maybe we just need to be more positive and like not critical or if it's the wrong partner? So get back, go back to your feelings, right? How are you feeling around that person? Mm -hmm. How are you feeling around that person? Are you feeling, it's not about them or about writing down the negative and positives and what he has, what he doesn't have. It's absolutely not about the other person. It's about you and how you feel around mm -hmm. that person. Do you feel a better version of yourself when you're around them? Or you feel the worst version of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. How do you feel around them? And, and if, if someone is in a situation that they don't know if the partner is a right partner or not, they're not sure if to get divorced or separate or not, I would say don't rush into making a decision from a negative uh, emotional state. Try to work on yourself. Try to get to alignment with yourself. Try, try to find happiness within yourself, even in that relationship. Because what happens sometimes is that we run out of that relationship because it's not working for me. I'm so upset with you. And we are carrying all those negative feelings with us. Mm -hmm. So we find the next partner, but we haven't healed. We haven't healed those negativities inside of us. So we are carrying all those negative energy with us. So my recommendation is always don't rush. You can always... Um, go on a separate way you can always get divorced there's always time to leave try to find your alignment and happiness when you are in a relationship and one of the two things is going to happen if when you do that either you're going to find happiness alignment and positivity inside your relationship even the dynamic is going to change your partner is going to change and you're going to fall in love again so many times this happens or the universe is going to put you on two separate places, but this happens with ease. It mm -hmm. is not going to fight and get divorced and go to court and all these things, right? Even if we want to go separate ways, we want to do it in an easy way. We want to do it in an effortless way. So the key is working on yourself, finding your alignment, finding your happiness while you are in that relationship. Mm -hmm. And either things are going to get better or you're going to go separate ways in an effortless, easy way.
Yeah, because then you can see if it's the right relationship for you, right? When you are being your best self and you feel like your best self, then you'll know, like, is this right for me or is it not right Mm -hmm. for me? And that kind of means too, right? Like maybe don't make the decision when you're like in a bad state of mind and you're Mm -hmm. negative and things aren't good. Like wait till you get yourself in alignment kind of, right? And feel good and then make the decision on that or maybe other more important things in life. Yeah, absolutely. Don't make a decision when you're not in a in a positive state. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, don't make a decision when you are uh, we are feeling stressed or negative. Again, we want to come into alignment with ourselves first, and just imagine this beautiful relationship. Now we are talking about relationships. Just imagine this beautiful, effortless, passionate, a loyal, amazing friendship. Everything in this relationship, and don't think about. Don't imagine. A specific partner imagine yourself being in a lovely amazing relationship and believe me when you do that it's either again as I said it's either your relationship dynamic is going to change or you're going to go somewhere else and find someone who can fulfill that for you don't yeah. be don't be again that we come back to being needy don't we don't want to be needy of that specific relationship and that specific partner we want to leave it up to the universe what is important is feeling good either with this partner or alone, or another partner. So you have to always go back inside and find the feelings of fulfillment and happiness inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. And well, before we get into some of the viewers questions, I know my viewers have some great questions for you. I just wanted to ask you maybe something about health. So I mean, for me, when I went raw, it totally transformed me and it fixed all my health problems. And just literally, I felt like myself for the first time ever. And I just naturally was so happy and so high vibe. And so I started manifesting like great things and it kind of like goes hand in hand for me. And that's what works for me. I know everyone, it doesn't work for everyone doesn't want to do that, but what, and I know sometimes you do need medical care and things like that. It's not all like diet and medical care. Like some things I think can be like our thoughts and our feelings with health too, right? What are your thoughts on that? And how do you think with the law of attraction and manifesting, we can like manifest perfect health and achieve like perfect health or get over something we want to get over? Mm Mm-hmm. So the about the disease, one thing I learned from Bob was like, he always said, don't say disease, say this is. Mm-hmm. So not being at ease. And he said, he taught me that everything that we are seeing in our current reality, our relationships, our health, our wealth, everything is a direct reflection of what is going on inside of us. Mm-hmm. The body is an instrument of the mind. And when I heard that, I was like, wow, I always intuitively knew that when I was like, when I, every time I got sick, I'm like, why am I getting sick? This is something going on in your subconscious mind and it's not conscious. So the body is an instrument of the mind and the disease come from negativity of thoughts, stress, worry, you know, everything that is happening in your mind that is on a negative plane, scarcity, right? So we have to, when we when it comes to health, that's what Bob taught me. And that's what I believe. Mm-hmm. We have to work on our mind again and trying to find, trying to heal ourselves in our thinking, right? Mm-hmm. I highly, highly believe like the diseases, even like cancer, it is the direct reflection of what is going on inside of us. Some people holding guilt a lot. Some people hold like they can't forgive other people. Yeah, so the opposite of this ease is being at ease. And being at ease comes from, remember I talked about knowledge, studying, understanding, understanding our mind, understanding the higher faculties of mind and the laws of the universe. So when we understand these things and we get this knowledge and studying and we get into alignment, that's how we're going to heal our body to me and, and I absolutely agree with you sometimes we have to take medications we have to go to the doctor and there are other things that are mm-hmm. that are necessary to our health but the majority of the 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 disease or either we are healthy or not comes back to mind and the way we think mm-hmm. and how much negativity we are carrying in our mind every day mm-hmm. crazy so it's just that. crazy it's yeah. crazy it's so interesting to me And, you know, when I really realized all this stuff was a thing, it was when I actually read a book, which I'm sure most people know is The Secret. That's when I was first introduced to all this stuff, which Bob Proctor was in. Mm -hmm. I think I read it in like 2006 or seven. 
And then I saw it does work because I really put it into practice right after that. And I really wanted this HGTV series with my husband. It was like 13 episodes where we bought and renovated a house and each room was like an episode. And I wanted it so bad. So I put into like effect the things I learned in that book. And I was like, I'm going to practice this. And I pretended I had it. I felt like I had it. I told my family members, even we got the show. Like, even yeah. before we did. And then we got it. And I swear it was because like, I really felt like I had it and pretended I had it. And then like with like, not in a needy way, I just like pretended yeah. I already had it. You know, so you told your family members you had it before, yeah, you before we it? did. Oh my God. You did. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing the if we did. Way of manifesting. Yeah. yeah. So what well, a, a, a funny story and not funny, a very interesting, amazing story is Sandy Gallagher is, um, is a, a very successful lady who works with Bob Proctor. So the, mm -hmm. the institute is called Proctor Gallagher Institute. And Sandy tells this story all the time that when he, she first got to know Bob, and she wanted to manifest this amazing mansion. Um, so my cat is here. Oh, it's she okay. She wanted to manifest this, this amazing mansion, and she didn't have enough money uh, for the deposit. And Bob, uh, she said, if you wanna, if you don't want to do something, never tell Bob because he's going to push you to, that, to do that thing. So one of the things that Bob recommended her to do was that just uh, go see that house with your real estate agent. And just uh, tell him to leave you alone. Go in each and every room. Even go sit in a bathtub. And just really imagine yourself being there and living there. And just feel yourself there. The other thing was, so it was like close to Christmas time, I think. Or a month or two before Christmas. He said, you're going to write an, an, a letter of invitation to all your friends and family. And you're going to invite them for Christmas. And you're going to give them this address of this yeah. house. And she was like, wow, I'm wow. so scared. I don't have the money. I don't have the deposit. And long story short, she did it. And obviously, it all worked out. The money, she she was able to manage the money. She got the house. She had the Christmas party with her family at that house. I love but it. This reminds me a little, well, not fully, but when I bought my first house, and I'm not recommending anybody do this. This was actually bad that I did this. So don't do this. But when I bought my first house when I was 22, I didn't have the money for the down payment or for the house when I bought the house. And it was like these new model homes. And I wanted this house so bad. And it came with all the furniture. And it was just like the cutest house ever. And I was like saying to my husband, because we got married young, I was like, we're getting this house. I waited in line. So I started a line. I was like number one out of hundreds of people. And I bought the model home. <laughs> and we didn't have the money for it. And we just made it happen. And we got the house. Like it worked out. I'm not, don't go do that. That is really dumb and irresponsible. And you could probably... If it didn't work out, get sued or something. It's not smart. <laughs> but I'm saying it worked out because I just did it and it believed it was going to happen. Out. It always works out. And that's why yeah. Bob always said whenever someone tell him, like, even he, even if someone wanted to take one of the Bob Proctor courses or coachings or whatever, or they want to buy a car or buy a house, and they said money, we, we don't, I don't have the money. He always said it's not about the money. Money always comes. You have to make a decision first. Yeah. When you make a decision that I really, really want that, I'm going after that, that's mine, money comes. And you find out ways to get that money. Yeah, and Bob brain Proctor... Is, your brain is just going to work that way. Yeah, yeah. They say, like, when you ask, believe, receive, like, and you just get into, like, a good state, you get more in, like, tune with those ideas and things to make it happen, right? Absolutely, yeah. You get more creative, you find ways, you reach out to people or... Things magically happen. So many stories of like these magic things. Yeah, it's really yeah, interesting. It's, it's yeah. really amazing. I forget what I was going to say. It was something good. I forget, but maybe it'll come up. But I'll ask you. Some of my viewers have just some really awesome questions about manifesting. So oh. let's get into these. So the first question says, I struggle with one specific part in the manifestation process. All the coaches and teachers say that once you've visualized and felt what you want to manifest, you have to let it go so that it can manifest. I never really understood that part fully. Does it mean I have to completely forget about it or just not obsess over it? And what can I do if it's hard for me not to give it thought every day? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that that can be confusing um, because you, you want to want something and you want to have a burning desire as Earl Nightingale said in Think and Grow Rich, but also you don't want to be obsessed over it. So the key to me is 
you want to really, really want something. It's not that you want to forget about it. You're not going to forget about it because it's in your heart. You love something. You want to get something. It's a situation or a material thing or anything. You're going to think about it and you're going to want it. But the, when we say let go or or what was in the sentence they, they said? They said. Obsessed over it. Yeah. Like, you know, should I just let it go and yes. completely forget or just try not to obsess over it? Yeah. So when we talk about let it go, it's about let go of the specific ways or timing that you want the universe to deliver it to you. Mm -hmm. Don't obsess over like, I want this thing in this specific way. And I want to do this kind of work to make that kind of money. Leave it up to the universe, the way that the universe is going to deliver to you. And also the timing of it. Don't be obsessed over the timing. The timing is not up to us. So many times we just guess about the timing. We want it to be for that specific time, but it's also up to the universe. Sometimes we're not ready for the thing that we want. We think we're ready, but we're not. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So when we say don't get obsessed over it and just leave it up to the universe, it's just the ways, the ways that the universe is going to deliver it to you. And mm -hmm. don't be in a needy, needy feeling and emotion as we talked about, right? Yeah. Okay. Well said. And that, okay. So I just remembered what I was going to say before about Bob Proctor. Didn't he talk a lot about carrying around a goal card and how important it is to have goals? Mm -hmm. And I think he, and one of the other, I don't know if it was Earl Nightingale or who it was said like, or maybe it was Bob, show me your goals and I'll show you where you're going to be in five years. And if you don't have any goals, like that's where you're going. It's like, do you think there's truth to that? And what do you think the best way is? Like, I want to, I have a lot of goals. So what's the best way to transfer them out of your head onto something? Should we be looking at it every day? Like I was looking on Amazon, like, is there a good goal mm -hmm. sheet or like, what do you do for that? Or what do you recommend? Yeah, that's Bob. Um, He said, if you tell me what you want, I can show you how to get it. And it's about goals and goals is actually the first lesson in my coaching lessons that I teach is goal setting and goal setting is so, so important. There is an amazing book called uh, psycho cybernetics. Yeah. And um, he calls about goal setting and how our mind, the way our mind and our nervous system works is like this psycho cybernetic cybernetic mechanism. And it goes after goals and it's a goal achieving mechanism in our mind if we don't have any goal we are just drifting in life we ha absolutely have to have goals all the time and a goal Bob always uh, said goal is not forgetting goals is for our expansion so when we set a goal we have to you ask me how to set a goal because there's so many goals first of all you go after something that you really really want so Bob always in his seminars he always asks what do you really want? What do you really, really want? And sometimes it takes some time to understand what we really want. Because mm -hmm. so many times we are doing things and after going after things that we think we want, but they're really things that other people want. Mm -hmm. We get influenced by other people or our parents or our partner. So we have to spend a lot of time, first of all, to find out what is inside of our heart. What is our real desire? What is it that we really, really want? And that is going to be a goal that we're going to go after. And it's going to be something that is going to stretch us. It is not going to be something that we have done before or we know how to do. We absolutely have no idea how to do it, but it's our desire. And that's a goal that we go after. And that's what makes it exciting because we have no clue how to get there. Right. Mm -hmm. But we love it. So this is the, this is a whole process that I teach how to get there, but Another thing that helps you to find out about your goals is a practice of just getting a pen and a paper and writing down 30 things that you want. You want to have, do, or be, right? So make this list and it has to be 30 items. Just try to think about it. If you can't come up with 30 items, come back to it the day after or later on and just look at this list and pick one that is really, really what you most love at this time and make it your goal and put it on a goal card. So you mentioned the goal card is so important because we want to have it in front of us all the time. We want to be, when we work in our days, we want to be having this goal in the back of our mind. And the goal card is something that Bob taught us. And you start with, I am so happy and grateful now that. So mm -hmm. it's always in present tense. We don't want to put it in the future because it's always going to be in the future. I'm so happy and grateful now that I am doing this. I am having this. I am being this kind of person. 
and carry it with you. And what I do that is really helpful and I teach my clients to do is to put that goal on the reminder of your phone. Hmm. And every like every one hour, every two hours, this reminder go off and you see that. You wow. See that. Because we're on our phones all the time these days, right? True, yeah. <laughs> Not that much on a goal card, but the phones is woo to us. So put yeah. it on a reminder and definitely read it, feel it, imagine it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I love that. And the next question is, okay, so wow, thanks for this opportunity. What can I do if the law of attraction doesn't work to overcome the state of why should I even try to go on with this? Um, law of attraction always works. <laughs> we just don't know sometimes that it's not working. It, it's working all the time. It's yeah. like saying, what do I do if gravity doesn't work? Honestly, it's the same thing. It's always working. It's yeah. just sometimes we are not aware of that. Sometimes we are not aware gravity is working until we fall. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. So the same thing applies for the law of attraction. So it's always working and we're always attracting and we are always attracting who we are and how we feel. We're not necessarily attracting what we want. Right. That's why sometimes we're like, I want this thing. So why am I not attracting this? Because you are not in harmony with that thing inside. You're not being that person. Mm -hmm. Right. So we attract who we are. So what was the rest of the question? What if it doesn't work? Well, it works. Oh, uh, what can I do if the law of attraction doesn't work to overcome the state of why should I even try to go on with this? Yeah. So just remember, it always works. It's, a, it's the universe. Like spring always follows winter, always works. And it is one of the universal laws. And you just have to be more, um, more conscious about it, you know? And sometimes maybe too, we do have like Jim Rohn used to always say, sometimes we do have winter seasons and like harder times than others, right? It, we're on this earth. It can't necessarily <laughs> always be like perfect times, right? We're here to experience yeah. like bad times too. So I think maybe that can give us that some relief. Something, uh, a, a new term that I'm, I'm hearing these days is uh, toxic positivity, right? It's not always spring. As you said, there are, we have winter times as well, because again, this is law of rhythm, it is nature. Like it, it's not always daytime. We have daytime and nighttime. So, mm -hmm. and when the nighttime comes, when the winter comes, you have to just, again, give yourself grace and see what you can learn from that, how you can grow to the next version of yourself through that mm -hmm. hard time. Mm -hmm. And just through that contrast, again, through that contrast, think about what you want instead. So these mm -hmm. are the things that I don't want. What do I want? So consciously change your focus to what you want in that winter time. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me of that quote where they say like, it's, you know, you're going through hard times and you think you've been buried, but you've actually been planted. Right. Like, have mm -hmm. you heard that I quote before? That. I yeah. Love I yeah. love that. I think I hear Ralph smart say that, that a lot. I follow his channel. Yeah. Um, have there been any like major, like what as like a coach and like you do this for a living, is there like one book in particular that's just like, it's the best book you ever read on this or like, I mean, I guess the Bob Proctor program is probably what did so much for you, right? Is there like any book in particular you think like this is well, the best book when it comes to manifesting? If uh, if anyone hasn't read the book, Think and Grow Rich, that is the first book I recommend. Bob read that book for 60 years every day. So Think and Grow Rich by, I have it on my desk, by Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. That is the first thing I recommend. Also, I recently got to the know the teachings of and the books of Neville Goddard. Mm -hmm. and the book that I'm reading right now is The Power of Awareness. Yeah. Amazing book. It's so good. And another author, I mean, I'm into books so much. <laughs> another author that I love is Price Pritchett. Yeah. He wrote the book U Squared. Okay. And he talks about quantum leaps. Wow. That's awesome too. That's awesome. Yeah. There's, there's one that I loved I and it's a really short book. I think it's called the science of getting rich. I don't want to mix it yes. up. So I could be wrong. I have it in my room, but that's the book. I'm pretty sure if it's the one I'm thinking of, it's in my room. That's the book that Rhonda Byrne read before Rhonda she Byrne. wrote the secret. And that's the book that totally changed her yeah. life. Yeah. So I got that. And that book is even easier to read. It's small. I think you can get it for free. Listen to it on YouTube too. And it's really good. So I'll try and find that and link it below. Amazing yeah. book, Science of Getting Rich is what Rhonda Byrne um, uh, created the movie Secret based on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talks about that book a lot. It's an amazing book. 
And it's so easy to understand and like, sure, I like that. Okay, so the next question is, what should I do when I struggle to visualize or feel my dream life? I think that's a great question because I've been there before a lot. Yeah, and I hear that question. I get that question a lot from my students. That's a very common question. So what I want that um, your viewers, the person who asked this question to think about is that visualizing is like muscle it is exactly like the way that we go to the gym and we train so we are for most of us we are not used to visualize consciously we haven't been taught that right no one taught us to visualize at school or teachers or parents so we are learning it right it's like going to the gym and the first day wanting to lift a 50 pounds weight and say well I can't do that so it's not for me or how do I even do that you start small right so you start small with um, just a few minutes or even a few seconds visualizing what you want. And one thing that is really helpful is closing your eyes and visualizing something that happened in the past mm. that you loved. So that's easier to see the past because we've already experienced that. It's easier to bring it to the to, to our mind. So close your eyes and just think about the events, situation, something that happened in the past that, and it was a very good positive uh, memory. And you are training your mind to visualize and use this uh, visualization faculty. And right after you are looking at the, this past event and you're bringing it into your mind's eye, start thinking about your future and what you want in your life. And again, it's just like a muscle that you are uh, training, you are practicing, and you're learning. So it comes with practice. Don't give up if the first day it doesn't work and it's hard for you. And like, I hear that from so many people, like, all, all I see is black. I'm not seeing anything. I cannot visualize. You can, we all can. It just needs to be practiced. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you do that, you're kind of saying to yourself too, right? If this happened then... I'm believing it can happen again, right? When you do that, yeah. if you're looking through the past things. Yeah. And you're bringing that energy and that feeling, the positive yeah. energy with you and putting it in the, in the, in the future. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Okay. The next question says, while trying to manifest healing, is it enough to just change one's vibration to more positive one? Or do we have to find the underlying cause, i.e. trauma or bad relationships, et cetera, of the disease and solve it to achieve healing? Yeah. So we talked about like disease, like being this ease or being at ease, and it all comes to mind and our thinking and our thought patterns. Our thought patterns, our paradigm is what get us sick. So we definitely want to work on becoming more positive and thinking more positive thoughts, but it also good to know what is the underlying cause of that, right? So that we can release it. Is it like I am being hard on myself? Is it that I am being jealous or I'm not forgiving a specific person? What is it? What is that thought pattern? So realizing what is that negative thought pattern that I am holding? What is the underlying feeling? Am I stressed all the time? Am I maybe not trusting? It's always important to find out that underlying thought pattern and just releasing it and starting to have more positive thoughts absolutely starting to be more on a positive vibration and positive vibration doesn't mean always being happy yeah it means having the right thinking that even if we're going through something hard we know that there is a lesson here for me we know that there is something better coming out of it we trust the universe positive thinking is right thinking not always being happy you know and do you think if we're going through hard times and do you think that like calling someone up and t complaining about it and like expressing how we feel if it's like bad emotions like oh my gosh this happened and like you're feeling bad is it like should we maybe avoid doing that is it giving avoid. it more oxygen and stuff should, or is it what do you think about that no completely avoid don't talk about it don't absolutely don't talk about it because when we talk about it I know we have the tendency to share and it feels like a release when we talk to someone else but it's just a habit, right? Get into the habit of don't talking about it. Because remember, I talked about ignoring our current circumstance if it's something that we don't like. So we want to ignore it as much as possible. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to give it more energy. Mm -hmm. right? When I you think talk you're about right. it, give it more energy. Maybe we do things that just make us feel good then to like transmute the energy, like go work out or 
You yeah. know, I interviewed this girl and she said when she gets angry, like, I think she tries to avoid like, you know, getting that energy to other people, not calling them up. And she says she goes to the store and she buys like a stack of plates and she goes out in nature and like she smashes them to like transmute the energy and get the energy out with like affecting someone else. She's just taking that. out on the plates in their garbage, obviously, which like sucks. Yeah. But like that, I think you just have to find the tools that work for you for that, you know, because there's sometimes we do have like bad energy in us that we need to transmute and get out. We, we need to transmute and get that, that energy out. You're absolutely right. Working out is very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I realize when we are in that negative feeling, it's even hard to move our body. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, in that case, I say, just go out and walk for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Just take the steps. You don't need to go to do the full um, one hour workout at the gym. But you're absolutely right. We need to transmute that energy, but not by sharing it with other people. Mm -hmm. By working out, by meditating, by smashing your pillow. <laughs> Why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Do what you got to do, right? Okay, yes. so the next question, is there a way we can become more confident in our ability to manifest when it feels like nothing is happening despite much effort? Yeah, you when when you're in that situation, what I recommend is start with manifesting something small, like start, first of all, think about your past. I'm sure we all have manifested so many things in our past. We just have to start thinking about mm. the situations and remember, right? Sometimes we forget. Just try to go uh, to your memories and use your memory and find what you manifested in the past and know that if you have manifested something in the past, you can do it in the future. And also start with something small, like manifest a cup of coffee, you know, mm -hmm. or something really, really small and give yourself some time and see when that happens. There is no small or big for the universe. If you can, mm -hmm. you can manifest a cup of coffee, you can manifest that. <laughs> mansion or whatever amount of money that you want or anything that sound big to you right and that also, reminds me of Aaron Dowdy he used to always say like with the house he wanted it was really expensive but not to act like that just like pretend like it's no big deal right it's just mm -hmm. like the rest of the houses it's not like don't put things on a pedestal basically right exactly because there's no big thing for the universe it's big because we because of our perception it's like as a collective we came to these these meanings of what is big and what is hard and what is easy right mm -hmm. is our meaning our uh perception it's not the universe perception for universe everything is energy and energy mm -hmm. just is it's mm -hmm. not big or small energy everything is mm -hmm. energy. and the other thing i think this is going to help this person is think about one of the other laws is law of oneness yeah so it means when if someone can have something or do something we can all have that and do that too, because in essence, we are all the same. We're spiritual beings. We mm -hmm. have the same spirit. So if other people are manifesting, absolutely, you can manifest it too. It's just maybe not at this time, it is coming in your future. So you just keep the faith, know that it's coming. It is happening for other people. It's going to absolutely happen for you too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. And then the next question, this is really important. They said, I love this question. Since no one has asked yet, how do we win the lottery? And I love this topic. I actually interviewed somebody that won the lottery. He has a channel, mm -hmm. Timothy Schultz, about manifesting. He interviews people who like manifested lottery wins. And mm -hmm. it's crazy how many people there are out there. And he said almost everybody that wins the lottery believes they were going to win the lottery. Mm -hmm. This video is so good. I'll put it down below. And there was this girl he interviewed. I think her name is Cynthia Stafford. I want to get her on. And she decided she was going to win a certain amount. I think it was like 122 million or like something like that. And mm -hmm. she put it on her vision board and she like hardcore manifested. And then she only played the lottery in the U S when it was that number. And she won the exact amount. And it's crazy how many stories he has of like people manifesting it. So like, I do think maybe it's possible if you're like a really big mm -hmm. believer and practicer of it, what do you think? I think it's possible too. But uh, I remember once someone, when Bob was still alive, I think it was just a few months before he passed away. Someone asked him the exact same question. And he was like, why are you even asking this question? Why do you want to manifest lottery? What is your goal in life? Do something that you're passionate about. And that's yeah. going to be your lottery. And you're going to earn as much money as you want because there is no, because money and abundance is everywhere, no matter what you do. And he was so into like, follow what you love. Like every day, it's going to be a bliss when you do what you love. 
and the money will come, when right? You're doing what you love. I'm doing what I love. And he's like, why do you want to win a, win a lottery? Like, what are you going to just money? True. You want to live a fulfilled, happy life every day. So go after your goals. That is a lottery for me. It is right now. Like what I'm doing is winning a lottery for me because I love it. I enjoy it. And but I believe that it is possible because it's all about manifestation and it's all about law of attraction and it's all about feelings and beings. So I'm sure people who won the lottery, they absolutely saw themselves, right? You have to see. They did. That Cynthia girl said she used to see herself doing interviews of like, mm -hmm. you won the yeah. lottery, people interviewing her. And she's right. Look, like I sent her an email, Cynthia, you want to come on the channel? She's been on lots of channels. Like, that's so like, I think sometimes maybe it's about the little details, right? Like Cynthia did, like, yeah. like imagining and feeling like people are interviewing you because you won, like, that's a real detail that you're taking. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. So you know what is going to help a lot is in, in anything that we want to manifest, including lottery is not seeing that you are winning the lottery, but seeing the after effects, like exactly what you said, like seeing being interviewed, like seeing how you are living now that you have won the lottery where you are, what are you doing? How are you spending that money? How does it feel to be that kind of person living that kind of lifestyle? Really, really connecting with that person because that person is obviously not the person that we are right now because that's going to be a different person, right? Living a different lifestyle and just seeing and imagining yourself living in that lifestyle and being- And I think too, maybe like seeing yourself helping other people with it and stuff too. I know she did that. And I think that's a big thing too with like, with your dreams, whether it be a certain house, think of like, okay, well with this house, I can entertain all my kids, friends and like provide this for them and like what you can give as well, like for what you want to receive, like how you can give back to the universe with that thing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Helping others either in like emotionally or, or uh, financially helping others always feel amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're right. It does. Yeah. And okay, so Marabella, she's a close friend of mine. She asked a question and I love you, Marabella. She said, why do some things manifest very easily with barely only a thought and others take a long time? Yeah, so again, this comes back to our definitions and our perception mm -hmm. of what is hard and what is easy. So the things that manifest easy, it's probably the things that we believe it's easy to manifest right mm -hmm, true we make it easy for ourselves we believe it's easy to manifest a cup of coffee but we believe it's hard to manifest like millions of dollars it all comes back to us it's not for the it's it's your belief as soon as you believe something is easy to manifest you 100 percent believe that it's going to manifest easily mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and if you're believing it is hard it's going to be hard okay. you have to change your belief so right? true and the belief, the way you change your belief is through your subconscious mind and mm -hmm. through repetitions, through affirmations, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And Anne said, how can we break free from negative patterns of thought? Yeah. So it is, it comes back again to the momentum we were talking about earlier and being in that negative momentum. And again, the, the number one tool that always helps me is gratitude right? Even if you are in the worst case scenario in your life, there always, there's always something to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. So feed your mind with gratitude as much as possible. Just every day, in this case, if you're in that rut of negativity, just every day, every morning, every at noon and dinner time and lunchtime, in the evening, feed your mind with gratitude. So to change and shift your vibration from negativity to positivity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And the next question said, what is the most important catalyst that ensures an intention becomes manifest in the fastest way possible mm -hmm. and with the highest vibrational energy? Yeah. So our intentions always become manifest if we believe and we see ourselves there. So mm -hmm. see if we have to see ourselves there already. So the book that I said, the power of awareness, Neville Goddard, he talks a lot about coming from the wish already fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So every day when you start your day, you start with that your wish is already fulfilled and you're already there. Mm -hmm. Feel that and get to your day and do the rest of your day. That's okay. how you manifest faster, right? It is a done deal. Yeah, because they say when you want things, you don't have it. And like they say not to like want, right? 
Mm-hmm. Like we have, we're here on, on, we naturally have desires and we'll continue to want more and more things, even after we manifest something. But when yeah. it comes to manifesting, they say a real secret is like everything, like you said earlier, is like in the present tense and we already have it. It's just yeah. like when they say a powerful prayer is like a Thanksgiving, like you're already have it, not like, you know, I want it, like thanking for already having it now, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because everything is always here. Everything is energy, right? So one example I love Bob always talked about was that like the knowledge of creating airplanes or the knowledge of creating cell phones or electricity has always been here. Mm -hmm. So everything is energy, right? And the energy is always here. It's just someone tapped into that energy. Someone tapped into that vibration, right? And about your manifestations and your dreams, also same thing. It is here. If you can think about it, that's what I love. I, I, I love this thing that if you can think your dreams are already here and manifested, you know why? Because you can think about them and mm-hmm. thoughts are a form of energy too. So you are bringing your dreams from that form of energy, thought energy to the physical form mm-hmm. of energy, this 3D energy. It's just the, the different energy. Like if, even if you are thinking about something, the fact that you're thinking about your dreams and the fact that you are, you can imagine something means it's already here. Mm -hmm. You just have to get there vibrationally and how you get there vibrationally with all these practices that we teach and also seeing yourself there and knowing that your wish is already fulfilled. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Mm-hmm. And the next question, they were, it wasn't a question, but it was kind of a statement about ho- talking about how they started a juice cleanse. And then they started attracting more and more money to continue on the juice cleanse and attracting more things. And that's one thing I noticed for sure. I don't know if you've ever done a juice cleanse, but I've done a 37 day and I've done like my most recent, I did 14 days and 10 days. And I did attract a lot more money because of that juice cleanse, like, like $10,000. It's crazy. But mm-hmm. I don't know if it's just because you're so clear when you do like a juice cleanse. You're just so yeah. like your your body and your gut, like you're so clear, but you still have all the calories and all the energy and you mm-hmm. just get more connected to the universe. So I think that's why I don't know. It's like, for, so but agree. don't get me wrong. I know some people can eat McDonald's and still attract like everything in this earth. And it's like, but for me, yeah. like manifesting really makes a big difference with how I'm eating or what I'm doing. I believe you. I've done juice cleansing because of your influence, obviously. Um, But I didn't do it for too long. I did it for three days only. And I felt amazing. And people were like, oh my God, how can you do that? And it was not hard. It was easy. It was actually really, really felt amazing. And I believe like different things. uh, Have you heard they say we become what we eat? Mm -hmm. So different foods like everything else in, on this planet have different levels of vibrations, mm-hmm. right? Like a fried food has a different level of vibration than like um, a fresh fruit. Mm-hmm. Like and an I, apple, there's scales they show. It has like such, the, I forget what the energy or what the scale is called, the, the aura type of thing. Like it's so vibrant. And then you look yeah. at like, yeah. It is like science. It is not, yeah. if you look at it like scientifically with the specific cameras that they have, you can see like everything has a vibration. Like even a drop of water, an apple, like different foods all have this aura and energy and different vibrations and you're putting it into your body, right? And I believe anything fresh, obviously it makes sense to me. I I don't know like what is the scientific reason behind it, but anything fresh, anything live like fruits and vegetables, you're eating it, they have a higher level of vibration. Mm -hmm. So you are getting that higher level of vibration. You're getting into a higher level of frequency. It Mm -hmm. totally makes sense to me that you can manifest easier on that level. Yeah. It's so interesting. And okay. So the next question, we kind of talked a little bit about this. Okay. How does desperation play into the law of attraction? Desperate to get out of a situation one is in. Yeah. Hmm. So it, I'm, I'm not sure if, what the situation is like it can be financial it can be relationship situations but just it, it all comes back to the practices that we do and the knowledge and understanding that everything always is working out for me just tell yourself this affirmation that I'm so happy and grateful now that everything is always working out for me even if I don't see it right now even mm-hmm. if it's like really, really hard right now, I don't see it right now, but there is no one against us. Like the universe is not yeah. against us. There's no one to punish us here. 
the universe love and adore us because we are the same energy, right? We are just experiencing this physical 3D world in this planet, which is an amazing experience for the energy. So there's nothing against that. There's no enemy. No one is pushing us or, or um, you know, giving us a lesson. We're going through this hard situation. We come out of it better. We learn a lesson. We, we become a better version of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And just have grace, you know, have grace and don't be desperate because things, again, one of the other things that I love to keep reminding myself is this too, this too shall pass. Nothing, nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. Not in our personal world, not in our, not in the nature. Everything keeps changing. Have grace, know that this is going to change and just work on your mind. Keep mm-hmm. working on your mind. Keep feeding your mind positive things and learn, learn about your mind. Learn mm-hmm. about the universe. Mm-hmm. Okay, I love it. And okay, so the next question, there's two more questions. What things ha- have you manifested? Well, we talked a bit about that. And is there anything that you've tried to manifest that has yet to happen? And is there some things that you cannot or should not try manifestation on? And if so, why not? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm always manifesting. I'm always working on the next thing. I um, I can share it with you guys. I uh, One of the things that I want to manifest, I really, really want to become the female version of Bob Proctor. That is what I love to do. That is what I love to teach. And the meaning of that is to be able to help as many people as possible, to be able to take this information to the world and just help people to see the potential that they have inside of them, like the the, the potential, the possibility, the, the way that they can change their lives forever. It's so information. This information is so in my heart. I just want to put it out there as much as possible. This is what I want to manifest. And I know it's going to come. It's just a matter of time. And about like the, the rest of the question was, is there anything that you should not manifest? Mm-hmm. Not try to manifest. Not try to manifest. Mm, I don't think so. Um, yeah. The only thing I can think of is don't try to manifest for people or, you know. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we can do that as well because our, our we are powerful, but we are not more powerful than the other people and they have willpower as well. Mm-hmm. Don't try to change someone. Like, don't yeah. try change your partner or, or manifest something out of someone just just work on yourself and manifest the things that you want in your life but other than that I don't think there's anything that we should not manifest as long as it's positive and why would we manifest something negative right yeah exactly <laughs> I love that okay and what if your partner is always negative hmm, that's that that's a question a Ashley has yeah, I, I actually get a lot of this this question and it happens and the way I love to think about it is I personally love to lead by example, right? Either if it's my partner, my family, my friends, if they are negative, I, I'm not going to focus on them that much. I know it's mm-hmm. harder with a partner because you're living in the same house, you're doing things together, but try to be an example. And believe me, people get curious and they come around. Your partner is going to come around and they're going to see, wow, you're doing this, this thing and that thing. And you're achieving so much and your life is getting better. So he or she is going to get curious and they're going to come around and they're going to learn from you. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if not, there's nothing you can do. Right. Don't focus on other people. I mean, sometimes, so many times we want to change other people and we want people to be this exact same way that we are. We, them, we want them to see the world the way we do see the world, but this is not our job. Like everyone is going through their own journey. We can't change people. We are not supposed to change people. We're supposed to be a good example. They're going to either come around and get to our level of um, high vibration. Or again, universe is going to put you in two separate um, places. But the only thing that you can do and the only thing that you have to do and you have to be concerned about is working on yourself and just be Mm -hmm. a good example. Mm -hmm. Okay, I love that. Well, this has been so amazing. I've loved having you on. This has been one of my favorites and I'd love to have you back again in the future. We should do it again. Absolutely. I loved it. It was so much fun and questions were amazing and I love talking to you. Yeah, me too. You're just so powerful and interesting. And I just know the viewers will love this. And if there's anything you feel called to end off with, like anything that comes to mind, anything we didn't talk about or any inspiration 
or if you feel like you've got everything out, then that totally makes sense because we've talked about a lot and let everybody know where they can find you. I think you have some big things coming up just shortly after this video goes up. So let us know and I'll post, I'll link all your stuff below. Awesome. Absolutely. So one of the things that is coming up soon in January, 2023 is the live event, live masterclass. I'm going to have it is called multiply your income in 2023. It is going to start January 16th, I guess, if I'm not mistaken, I will send you the link so you can put it um, in your show notes and it's a free five days event. Only 30 minutes a day, but jam-packed with information on how to multiply your income in 2023. So that's one thing. And I'm active on social media, on Instagram, mostly on Facebook. And I'm also on LinkedIn, not on TikTok yet. And not yeah, on me too. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. It's enough with YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. I can't, I don't have time for TikTok. I know, but you have this YouTube channel, which is amazing. And I love this channel. It's so thanks. good. So informative. Thank you. You're doing I appreciate that. Job. Yeah. Well, thanks. You've been so awesome. And I've personally learned a lot from you in this episode. Oh, so I'm going to take you. these things you've said and apply them to my own life. So thanks. Cause that's had like a real positive impact. And what you're doing is having a positive impact on a lot of people. And that's just amazing. So thanks again. I'll link everything down below. Everybody go follow Helia sign up for her coaching. She is incredible, which I'm sure you can already tell from this video. So powerful and incredible. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did give it a big thumbs up right now and be sure to subscribe if you don't already for more great videos, just like this one. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.